coming up on today's show. That's where we start with a lot of people is letting them know that they're not alone when it comes to paperwork. I mean, yeah. I think disorganization is something that just doesn't go away, does it? What, how that breaks down is we've got 12 filing categories that we have agreed upon um, that it makes sense to, to train them on. Simple paper management today on Keeping You Organized. Hello, welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we are gonna keep it simple, K-I-S-S. We're gonna take and give you some paper management tips, but kind of from a different angle uh, because there's a neat story behind this. And we're gonna bring on Darla DeMauro from uh, heartworkorg.com. Darla, welcome to Keeping You Organized. Thank you so much for having me back, John. Yeah, you know, uh, this idea of uh, paper management, uh, you know, that's one of the main reasons people go to a professional organize, organizer like you. Uh, and some people think, well, I never learned, you know, whatever their excuse is, but kind of doesn't everybody really have uh, an issue with being organized? Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's where we start with a lot of people is letting them know that they're not alone when it comes to paperwork. You absolutely said the right thing there. Um, paper by far and away is the the number one issue that people call it. Not that everybody calls us for paper management. Certainly we love doing closets and garages and basements too. Um, but far and away, the number one issue that we get calls about is paper management. Well, and and we hear we hear all the time, oh, the paper is going away. Everyone's going digital, you know, but we still make billions of file folders every year. So I mean, yeah. I think disorganization is something that just doesn't go away, does it? No, it doesn't. And, you know, I've been in the business world long enough. We've we've um, been talking about the paperless office for a long time. And uh, the stats actually don't bear that out. We're actually using more paper today than we did 20 years ago and like a lot more. So, you know, that means more paper, more filing supplies, all of that. And we're still, even though we're getting so many emails and digital messages these days, people are still overwhelmed with junk mail and um, and regular mail too, and uh, healthcare paperwork and just all sorts of things. So we are no, nowhere close, sadly, to the digital, completely digital paperless world. Yeah. Well, I alluded in the intro a little bit to this, uh, a different concept of uh, paper management because you teach some specialty classes on this. Tell us a little bit about that uh, paper management class and how it uh, relates to the organization you're working with. Yeah, so the organization is Habitat for Humanity, and a lot of people have heard that. It's, of course, a national and international organization. Uh, I work with the Habitat of, uh, affiliate, you can think of it as kind of the franchise, in this area, in my Philadelphia area. Um, so it's Habitat for Humanity, Mont Delco. It's two counties that um, this particular affiliate covers. And um, everybody knows that Habitat for Humanity works on providing uh, decent, safe, affordable housing in the communities where they work. Um, the reality is there's only so many houses that an affiliate can build in a year. So they've added this additional program called Almost Home. Mm. And um, it's an eight week program that anybody can join up in, in my area. Um, it's not super selective. Um, people opt into this, but it's an eight week commitment. They meet twice a week. So it's 16 classes. That's a lot, you know, to um, for a working adults and working families to opt into. Um, but as part of this, it's, it's really the whole 16 weeks is um, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. What Habitat is doing is trying to help these people understand their financial situation and understand the financial world in general so that they can work themselves into more stable housing or maybe their first mortgage, um, basically just, you know, a better situation when it comes to housing. So I'm just, I mean, I get chills even sitting here talking to you about it because every time I'm in front of this group, there's usually about 20 families that are in the group. Some people come alone, some people come with their spouses. And um, we start, we have done this now for a couple of years with Habitat and um, we start with the paper management and organizing early in the program so that everything else that they do and touch and handle and store when it comes to paper is easier to manage. You know, what a concept. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's figure out wh how to store things and what the paper management system ought to look like. And then everything else is easy after that. 
Yeah, you know, what I'd like to know is, do they uh, teach you uh, uh, on that first day you move in about not going to Target and spending $200 on like all these things you thought you should have, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, keep in mind, these are people, these are not youngsters that are taking this course. I mean, usually it's, again, families. So 30s, 40s, and 50s um, are the ages of these people. And they're already living someplace um, and they've got households. You know, they've got, a lot of times they have kids already. So yeah, they're dealing with clutter at home. They're dealing with um, jobs and the re same responsibilities that we all have, right? And that is the point that I come back to time and time again. I start this class out when I get to teach it. I just I just do one night of the 16. I don't do all 16. Um, but when I get to teach it, I start out by telling them, look, I work with everybody. I am blessed that I get to work with homeless people and I get to work with millionaires. Right. And most of us are someplace in between, but I get to work with people all the way along that spectrum. And just what you and I started out by saying that paper management and paper overwhelm really touches everybody on that spectrum, whether you've got a lot of money, a little money or no money, that is universally true. And by the way, I've traveled and I've spoken about organizing throughout the world uh, in France, in Australia. It's not just true for Americans, it's true for people right. in general, all around the world. Right, yeah, and they don't teach you how to get organized like in any kind of schooling that I, the only thing they teach you is to line up for the bus, right, and line up for lunch, and then you sit, <laughs> sit in rows in the classroom, but that's about as organized a, a curriculum that any any student gets at any school. Yeah, most times that's true. You're exactly right. So if somebody's gotten some additional training on uh, or teaching on how to use a calendar or how to set up a file system, you know, bonus. But really, that is where we start. Um, so this class that I teach is just one hour. I get one hour with wow. these people. And um, the first thing I do is I ask them one question. We do a one question um, uh, self-assessment. And the question is really simple. It says, um, before class, please circle your current paper organizing state, you know, from one to 10. And I say like, one is, you know, I have no idea what a folding file folder is. And 10 is I could teach this class, right? And the average, the average number that we usually start out with is um, somewhere around 3.8. Wow. So if you think of, you know, people, if you kind of think of like a five or a six as, oh, I'm kind of average at handling paper, the average is way under that. Right. And so I get one hour and um, it's funny, John, because we start with, I'm, I kid you not, we spend about 10 minutes on how to put the little file tabs onto a hanging fo file folder. Wow. Because if you've never done that before, how would you know? You know, there's a way um, some of them tilt forward, some of them tilt backwards, some of them stand up straight, but you can fold them to make them um, more visible. Um, you know, how do you put They're kind of fiddly, right? I mean, right. you guys are in the business, but right. you have a thing and you got to put it in the little tab. And, uh, you know, one of my tricks is I say, look, I never put the, the plastic tab in the far left or the far right position because sometimes that position is actually glued shut. Ah. It's just happens in manufacturing. So I always skip that one and I, we put it either one in from the left or one in from the right. And so, um, you know, and I teach them how to put the little white tab inside the plastic thing. And these are things that like John, you and I would take for granted and maybe people listening to this podcast are going to take for granted, but it's just not, if you've never worked in an office before, let's say you've always worked in retail, how would you know? How would you know that stuff? Well, it's interesting too. I'm thinking, boy, this would be a whole nother uh, podcast we could do is how to put the tab on a folder. Yes, that, exactly. Unless you, unless you use our fast tab folders where the tab is built in and you don't have to deal with that, but that's a whole nother uh, product and a yeah. whole nother subject. See, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna take a quick break now. When we come back, I wanna talk about that simple file system that you help them set up because you can only do it uh, get it in an hour. So uh, we'll we'll do that when we come back. We're with Darla DeMauro talking about simple paper management and we'll be right back. It's the summer sale at myorganize.life with 25% off office products like file folders, hanging folders, accordion files, and presentation products. You can get it at myorganize.life. That's myorganize.life. 25% off all products. It's our summer sale at myorganize.life. 
We're back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about simple paper management, how you uh, take and set up uh, a, a simple paper system, working with Darla DeMauro here, heartworkorg.com. And uh, Darla, before the break, boy, you were, you were getting us an education on how to put the tab in. Uh, but <laughs> let's talk about the just the kind of the filing, the simple filing system that you help people get set up. Right. So the... The simple filing system is um, made up of just hanging folders and manila folders. Um, manila folders, by the way, are those kind of beigey ones that go inside the hanging file folders. Uh, sometimes they're called interior folders or just file folders, right? Um, but when I'm teaching this class to the Habitat folks, um, we actually donate the supplies and, and actually Smead has been involved in that before. Oftentimes we'll um, you know, we'll get your supplies. And um, so I pay for some of them. Habitat pays for some of them. Sometimes corporations will donate some. And um, so I don't get a lot. I get one. Uh, I actually pay and we make sure that we get one um, plastic bin that has a handle on it because I like that it has a handle on it and then it's mobile. And a lot of these people, you know, they're going they're in between housing. So they need to be able to kind of pick up and move at a moment's notice. Um, sometimes they are homeless, not usually when we're dealing with the habitat crowd, but, um, but it can be important that they have this, you know, a file cabinet's not going to work for them. Like right. you can't pick up a file cabinet very easily and move it, but a file box, a plastic file box is easy to work with. So they get that, they get, um, 24 hanging file folders and then a, a handful of manila or interior folders. And so what, how that breaks down is we've got 12 filing categories that we have agreed upon um, that it makes sense to, to train them on. And so what I want people listening to this podcast to come away with is you don't need a million filing um, categories, right? You don't need a million filing folders. Uh, you need one box of hanging files to start or to remake your filing system. So they have 12 um, categories and it's simple things like banking, right? That's a category or um, insurance. Now under insurance, I love talking about this one because it makes it really crisp for people. Why do you only need one insurance folder? Because you can have subfolders. This is where the manila or the interior folders come in mm -hmm. and all of the different insurances, they get their own interior folder, right. but you don't need a lot, right? You've got a car insurance, you've got health insurance, you've got home or rental insurance, you've got life insurance. Um, some people have a storage locker, you know, uh, where they've got things stored off site. And um, oftentimes you'll have insurance for that, too. So all these different types of insurances, they all kind of belong together in the same folder, but they all get their own interior folder. Awesome. So that, that's an example of how we, you know, help people put together some very important paperwork, but it's all in one place. And it's really, really simple. Yeah, I think we have a photo that we can put up right here too, kind of showing that this is a very simple thing. And and sometimes when you know that it's simple, it makes it actually a little easier to get started and get get moving, isn't that correct? Right, yeah. And I, you know, I have a lot of people say, oh, well, this won't work for me because it doesn't have, you know, I need, I need to see these categories. I need to see all of my utilities in a different place. Like, no, <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm gonna help you make it simple. And, and they've overthought they're filing for a long time. And once, you know, as you know, John, once you let your paper start going crazy and getting really complex, it's hard to bring it back into these simple categories, but it can be done. And at the end of the night, when I'm done with these Habitat um, students for Almost Home, they take their, um, I'm just looking at a recent one. Uh, I told you they start out self rating themselves yep. at a 3.8 on a, an expertise scale on handling paper. Um, and that scale is a one to 10 scale. So they say eh, most on average, they're somewhere around 3.8. And at the end of the night, uh, just an hour later, just one hour later, I ask them the same question and I say, please circle your ability to stay organized now that you have this simple filing system and these tools. And they now jump up to an average rating of 6.4. Nice. Yeah. That, that's awesome. So it's really, I think it's a confidence builder for them. It's practical because they can take and use these things, uh, you know, in their new home that they're getting. Uh, right. and, I mean, and plus it's probably, for them, it's probably a whole overwhelming situation anyway, isn't it? Just the whole concept yeah. of being involved. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it's paper and, you know, keep in context that they are in the middle or starting a 16 week course and every session that they go to, they're doing things like pulling their credit report and putting together a resume and um, looking at their uh, current debt load and paying utilities or, or paying off debts. Uh, that's a big part of this class. So everything that they're doing is paper driven. Um, even if it's electronic too, there's still usually paper attached to it. So, um, you know, getting a handle on your finances is tough uh, because it's emotionally driven. It's It can be paper overwhelming, just all sorts of things. Right. So are there any other points with this simple uh, paper management or are we kind of before yeah. we wrap up kind of ready to go? Yeah, so I talked just really quickly. I talked about the 12 folders that we get um, their paper filing system down to kind of the archive stuff. But then we also put together a tickler system. And that's the way to get all that sort of random paperwork off your counter and off your desk. And um, that is also, you know, if you show that picture of the filing um, filing. Yep. Uh, box that they get. The other sort of the left side are the 12 folders. The other side are, are another 12 folders. And it's just January through December. And it's a way for people to say, hey, there's this thing that, you know, maybe my kid needs a permission slip or there's a prescription that I need to, uh, you know, need to fill next month. Or I need to remember to take the cat to the vet, you know, in the summer to get her, you know, whatever, flea, flea shot, flea tick, whatever. Um, these are things that, you know, shouldn't really go in a filing system to die. They And they shouldn't really live on your counter because then they get mixed in with all sorts of other important right. papers. But if you put them just where you need to see them in the upcoming 12 months, they're easy to come back to. So that's the, the basis of a tickler system. Mm -hmm. And again, all it takes is supplies that most people already have. Um, and that is just, um, you know, filing system, uh, filing folders mm -hmm. and a box to put them in. I mean, it's that simple. Awesome. Well, you know, uh, Darla, this is great. So if people want to get a hold of you, can you t talk about some of the services you offer? And, and uh, even if they're local there, can anyone take that class or do you have to kind of be involved in the Habitat program? Yeah. Well, so the first thing from a Habitat standpoint, I was I would say is go on and, and find a Habitat affiliate near you. There are Habitat affiliates in most counties or regions in the country. Okay. Um, and I'm in Philadelphia, but we work hands on with people and we work virtually with people all over the world. I have a Facebook group that you can find by it's a free Facebook group that you can join. And there's a lot of chatter all the time about what people are organizing. And um, I'm in there all the time, you know, answering questions for people. Uh, they can certainly get a hold of me at heartworkorg.com. And if they're really interested in like diving in and doing uh, the kinds of things that we're talking about on this podcast, I have on my website a link for, uh, it's up in the top right hand corner, it's books and classes. Mm. And we do have online classes where you can um, get a lot more paper management information through our, it's Oddly enough, it's called Organizing Your Paper, um, and it's an online wow. course. You buy it once, and um, I know people. some people are still afraid of online courses, but I say, look, if you can watch a funny cat video on YouTube, you can take this online course. It is really driven by just clicking on and watching videos and um, some downloads, you know, some um, worksheets that I give you in the course. So all of those are options. I'm happy to work with people, you know, knee to knee where where I live, but also virtually as well. Awesome. Well, Darla, this has been another uh, action-packed, info-packed episode, and I'm sure we'll have you back again in the near future. Thank you so much. I love coming on, and um, I love that you share all this great information from myself and my NAPO colleagues. Awesome. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Now you have the basis of a simple uh, paper management system and uh, the only simple thing that you need to do next is to come back for our next episode of keeping you organized